Objects are a crucial part of Geometry Dash, as they're the building blocks of every level. You can place down, modify their size and color, and make whatever you want. The sky is the limit here. But how do you use objects to make this? To put it simply, the way you normally build is very different from how you would decorate. Most top creators don't use objects in the way you think, and here's why. When decorating a level, you might start by choosing some objects and using them to fill in the structures. After all, this bottom-up approach is how you'd normally make gameplay or use triggers. However, it stops working when you want something complex. The second your level has a theme or uses custom details, this mindset will only hinder you, and if you have to figure out what objects are in this structure, you'll waste lots of time choosing one object out of the hundreds in the editor. This leaves you with less time to create, wasting time you would otherwise use to improve. So what do the best creators do when decorating? They use a top-down approach instead of a bottom-up one. They start with the idea that they will want to make and note its main characteristics, like its shape and colors. Next, they work backward and choose the most efficient objects to make that idea. They want to make this shape and using these objects is the fastest way. This approach turns decoration into a puzzle where you combine objects to make new shapes. Just like a painter's brushes, objects are tools that create something greater, helping to organize your actions as you create. Now, let's look at two people who use a top-down approach, Zender Game and Bly. If you look at Zender's levels, you'll see that his object use follows the strategy that I mentioned earlier. He wants a specific shape here, so he takes an object and uses scaling, rotation, and movement to make it. Because his levels are complex, Zender implicitly organizes his details into different shapes, narrative details which tells a story, aesthetic ones that sit around and look pretty, and functional ones that help you learn gameplay and understand how objects work. Additionally, he uses a lot of reference images. These are crucial when decorating because they tell you the exact shapes an idea needs, so you'll spend less time visualizing your idea and can spend more time placing objects. When you create, always organize details by how they'll contribute to your level and use as many references as possible. If you were to reference Bly's levels, you'd see another benefit of the top-down approach, optimization. You've probably guessed that some objects are more efficient than others on making the same shape, which matters when you want to optimize. If you can use one object to make something that would otherwise require three, go with a single object. In Bly's case, using a top-down approach gives him a clear idea of the shapes he's making, which means he can optimize from the get-go. This takes some more experience, as you'll have to know what object exists and what's most efficient for your deco, but it is well worth it. I suggest you get used to the top-down approach before you tackle optimization, as it'll make you a faster creator. The objects you use aren't as important as how you use them. There are tools and puzzle pieces that you combine to create more complex visuals. And just like how puzzle pieces come together to form a pre-planned picture, you should form a concrete vision and choose objects that fulfill it. If you can do that, then the sky really is the limit. Hell, you can even build the sky if you wish.